Hey guys, Level Cap here. I've played almost every single Battlefield game that's been made since the original 2002 title, and today I'm going to rank all of them from F tier to S tier starting chronologically with Battlefield 1942. This game was nothing short of industry defining. By that, I mean there pretty much wasn't any industry for large scale infantry and vehicle based combat games. Tribes 1 and 2 were about as close as we had at that time, but they simply weren't in the same league. Battlefield 1942 dropped on PC gamers like a ton of bricks, featuring the most realistic World War II multiplayer combat experience to date. Flying, driving tanks, infantry, landing craft, and even aircraft carriers put 1942 just leagues ahead of any other multiplayer game in terms of scale. Almost everything else at that time was dabbling in small scale infantry combat, and Battlefield 1942 was like hold my beer. Now because it was the first game in the series it wasn't a particularly refined gameplay experience and it featured a lot of open maps where you might just be running for a long time before seeing any sort of combat. Nonetheless it really laid the groundwork and it supported modding which led to the desert combat mod showing what the game would play like in a modern theater of war. This game is a solid A tier. The only reason it's not S tier is that it was in my opinion still trying to figure out what type of game it was and how to appeal to a bigger crowd. The next game in the franchise was Battlefield Vietnam. It ran on the same, although slightly upgraded, Refactor 1 engine. There were some cool upgrades in this game, like lock-on missiles for jets, helicopters that could lift tanks and boats into combat, and some pretty cool city maps that took urban fighting to the next level. That said, it wasn't really a huge step forward for the franchise, and some of the jungle maps lacked a more open battlefield feel that I think a lot of players missed from the previous titles. The game was fun for its time, but I think it lands itself in the C tier for just not being that memorable. DICE got the message with their next title, and Battlefield 2 brought with it an updated Refactor 2 engine and all the modern military combat you could want. It really established the groundwork for what became Battlefield's most popular theater of war with Black Hawk helicopters, Abrams tanks, TV guided missiles from the two seat attack helicopters, better defined squad roles, unlocks, and it even injected a Battlefield commander who could call in artillery strikes and supply drops. The maps and overall gameplay flow was heavily improved from the past titles with less long distance running and more action. It's an A tier in my book, barely missing S tier simply because DICE learned and improved on this formula even more down the road. EA also produced a console only version of Battlefield called Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. It supported 24 players in multiplayer and was the first Battlefield game to have a single player. Sadly, I didn't play this one, but it had pretty favorable reviews. Next, DICE decided to go on a journey with Battlefield 2142. This game featured futuristic fighting with VTOL aircraft, mech warriors, hover tanks, and of course the notorious Titan mode where players would fight over giant hovering aircraft carriers. I have to give DICE some props for taking a big risk with this one, and it does have a cult fan base. I did play it quite a bit, but ultimately it had some clunkier gameplay mechanics that I just didn't love, and once the Titan mode wow factor wore off, it felt like more of a side grade to the franchise franchise if even that. Many of the players I knew were just going back to play Battlefield 2. Despite some of my fond memories with the game, it really doesn't break out a C tier for me. Now, Bad Company was the next game on the list, and it was an impressive title as it brought with it the Frostbite engine and destruction. I wasn't much of a console gamer at the time, but even I had to hop on for a bit to test out the new engine. The single player was quite cool, and the characters and writing seemed like a really fun way to play Battlefield without the usual military gruff that was so common in war games. However, because I was coming from the PC side of things, I found it very hard to enjoy the game with such a low frame rate of 30 FPS and then narrower field of view. That coupled with the 24 player limited multiplayer felt like a bit of a downgrade coming from my PC. So while I respect the game, my PC snobbery won't let me place it beyond C tier. Next, we have one of the weirder things that DICE ever did, and no, I'm not talking about Battlefield Heroes, that's coming next. DICE's next game, or mini game really, was Battlefield 1943, an Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 game. It took place in the Pacific Theater of War, it featured four classic maps, including Wake Island, and it ran on the Frostbite engine, so it actually looked pretty good. Again, though, being a console exclusive, it never offered more than 24 player battles. Generally, people seem to like it, but I didn't play this one back in the day as it was supposed to come to PC, which was later canceled. 
Now at this time back in 2009, devs were getting wind that the free-to-play microtransaction titles were all the rage, and in response, Battlefield Heroes was released. It actually ran on the older Refactor 2 engine and was the only Battlefield game to use third person as the main viewing angle for infantry combat, and it featured similar but also very goofy gameplay, very much borrowing from Team Fortress 2's style. Compared to Team Fortress 2 though, this game saw very little success as it was PC only and it didn't really cater to most fans who were not so patiently awaiting a full-fledged Battlefield game on PC. As a poorly conceived game, Battlefield Heroes gets an F tier from me. Next, we get to the cult fan favorite, Bad Company 2. It's also the game that I played for my first ever YouTube video. Hey guys, Level Cap here. Yeah, you can skip that video if you want. Bad Company 2 ran on an improved 1.5 Frostbite engine, and this brought the Bad Company crew to the PC for the first time with next level destruction where players could pretty much flatten entire maps, plus it brought Rush to the PC for the first time. This was also the first Battlefield title to do a PC and console release at the same time for a similar product. Now, Bad Company 2 was limited to 32 players maximum on PC, which actually ended up working fine. The maps were smaller and things felt a little bit more cozy because of it. There weren't any jets in the game, but helicopters never really felt overly dominant and you could take them down as infantry. There were, however, some weird mechanics where class is having kind of odd combinations of weapons and abilities, plus some of the upgrade options in the game were fairly limiting and not really that interesting. But it was still a great game that felt almost like an alternative alternative option to the epic scale of a 64 player battlefield. I give Bad Company 2 a solid B tier. Now, before we move on to the next major release, EA decided to mess around with some more free-to-play games, Battlefield Online and Battlefield Play for Free. These were basically free online versions of, well, Battlefield 2. And while they were fine experiences, they certainly didn't bring much to the franchise and were more or less a way for EA to try and re-monetize an old game. I give these ones F tier for lack of F ort. Get it? Luckily, the next game in the franchise was Battlefield 3. Again, what I would call an industry-defining title. It had the best graphics of any multiplayer FPS by a long shot. It featured 64 players on PC, awesome-looking destruction, had all-out warfare with jets, helis, tanks, and even limited boat stuff. Enemy boat spotted. Enemy boat spotted. Enemy boat spotted. Enemy the infantry movement and gunplay mechanics saw a huge step up here as well, with very realistic looking and feeling weapon fire, amazing sound design, and an incredible theater of war feeling to every map. The maps also displayed what I would call a franchise high point when it comes to gameplay flow and good movement, as long as you don't count Operation Metro. Battlefield 3 is one of the most battlefieldy games of all time, and while it wasn't a flawless experience, it came pretty darn close. For this, it sits prominently in the S tier category. And just as you thought, how many more TDM matches on No Shark Canals can I possibly play? Battlefield 4 was dropped on the hungry player base and took things to the next level. Well, sort of. What seemed like a slam dunk for DICE on paper ended up with a lot of launch issues and not many evolutions to the gameplay, nicknamed Battlefield 3.5 by many of the players. However, because Battlefield 4 dropped when consoles were finally starting to pack some decent gaming hardware, it was the first console game that also supported 64 players, giving actual parity between the still separated PC and console player base. The game looked great, it featured improved gunplay, was packed full of more content than any other Battlefield game, and it had, well, maps. Some of the maps were great, but personally I feel this is when DICE started to lose sight of some of the fundamental FPS design principles in favor of, well, spectacle. Form over function, baby. Still, Battlefield 4 was a layup for DICE, and it gets a solid A tier for me. Next, we have the black sheep of the franchise. EA was so close. They saw what Call of Duty was doing with their multiple studios pushing out COD games on alternating years and thought that they could play that game too. So they gave the Frostbite engine over to Visceral Games who made Battlefield Hardline, a cops and criminals version of Battlefield. Not Bad Company 3, not Battlefield 2143, it was Cops and Robbers. Even saying it now, it's 
so obviously a terrible idea. Anyway, the game shipped and it actually featured a lot of really cool improvements to the franchise. Taking ammo from teammates, better UI and vehicle spawn systems, really cool drivable gameplay, awesome maps, and fun game modes. Visceral really knew how to make a good game. They were just doomed by the overall theme. And while it was fun from sort of a goofy perspective, Battlefield had built an audience who wanted military games, and Hardline's popularity was pretty much doomed before it even shipped. The player base could barely even populate its final DLC maps, at least on PC. Sadly, for the terrible thematic choices, I place Hardline in the C tier category. Fortunately, DICE came back swinging hard with Battlefield 1. I can still hear the Seven Nation Army trailer song thumping away. Battlefield 1 sold like hotcakes and introduced a huge gaming audience to World War 1, a theater of war that was pretty much never explored by such a big FPS game. BF1 oozed atmosphere like nothing else out there. The gameplay was insane, cavalry cutting down soldiers on an open battlefield, field cannons loading massive shells, full squads operating tanks, airships falling dynamically on top of cities and destroying entire city blocks, amazing aerial dogfights with tail gunners. Every single element of this game hit hard. Except for the gunplay, at least at the start. This was probably one of the game's biggest flaws as it tried something completely new, introducing a ton of weapon bloom to, I guess, simulate less accurate weapons of the time, but this change put off a huge portion of the players who wanted something with more intuitive gameplay. DICE eventually dialed it back and actually built some really high skill mechanics around the gunplay, but it just wasn't intuitive or clear to most players. This coupled with a gimped progression system System and minimal weapon and class customization options made the game feel more shallow than it actually was. But for those that stuck around, we got to enjoy the depth hidden beneath the surface. Battlefield 1 is, simply put, my favorite Battlefield game. Despite its flaws, the game is truly a work of art, and it deserves an S tier for that. Next up, we got Battlefield 5, or Battlefield V, a lesson in how not to launch or really market a game. The reveal trailer left players guessing as to what the actual game was supposed to be, and from what I hear, some of the devs were actually confused as well. When it shipped, Battlefield 5 was a buggy mess that featured mostly unknown battles from World War II, which was in stark contrast to Battlefield 1942 that hit all of the major conflicts. Most players hated the game from the start, as there was, well, a lot of stuff to hate. Bugs, visibility problems, inconsistent weapon damage, and very few iconic locations. This coupled with an extremely slow rollout of new content led to an angry player base that largely abandoned the title. Amazingly though, DICE didn't abandon the game, and instead they fixed the heck out of it, turning it into a very competent game that features incredible graphics, a cover building system, and a final DLC that hit hard with the beach landing of Iwo Jima. Battlefield 5 may have launched as an F tier, but it managed to prop itself up to a solid B tier. And this brings us up to present time, Battlefield 2042, a game with a somehow even more notoriously terrible launch than Battlefield 5. 2042 on paper sounded like a great game, an upgrade to 128 players, a dedicated extraction style mode, and portal letting players mod and create their own types of game modes. But what players got was simply a shell of a much bigger plan. The world crafting was almost non-existent, the gameplay was massively problematic with coverless maps, the doubled player count had simply no balance, maps were unwinnable on some sides due to the lack of testing, the extraction mode was dead on arrival, and the portal mode was predictably used for stat padding, and it had gimmicky crap like hero classes and tornadoes. 2042's launch revealed that the company had some massive managerial problems, and it was followed by a complete restructuring of DICE shortly after launch. What seemed primed to be one of DICE's best games ever ended up being one of the worst. Almost two years later, DICE has done a lot of work trying to bring the game back to a good place, and while the work they have done is good, it's also been a content light experience, giving players who stuck it out, well, not really much to do. So while 2042 managed to pull itself out of the F tier launch status, I'm not sure I can give it anything more than a D tier 
thanks to the incredible lack of post-launch content. That said, we don't know if 2042's story is officially over yet. We'll have to wait and see what DICE delivers in the future. Let me know what you guys think of my tier list in the comments. I know everyone has their favorites, which may differ from mine. And next up, check out this video on how to get the best positional audio in games, something particularly important in Battlefield. As always guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.